once carbon dioxide goes in the atmosphere, there's no natural way to get rid of it quickly. And this morning, scientists say that's the problem. What goes up doesn't come down when it comes to carbon emissions. We all know the saying, life is all about balance. Well, the Earth is no different. So what happens when we as humans emit too much carbon into the atmosphere? Fox 43's Greg Perez continues our Climate Smart series with a look at the carbon cycle. Carbon, the backbone of all life on Earth. Economies, homes, and transportation are powered by it. But humans are putting out more of it than ever before, and it's resulting in one of the most serious questions facing humanity today. What happens when we disrupt the carbon cycle? Carbon naturally falls down in rain, runs off in rivers and streams or into the ocean. Fossils both in the ocean and on land store it as well. Water evaporates back into the atmosphere, and the process starts over. Plants absorb it too, and put out pure oxygen to replace it. Left undisturbed, the carbon cycle keeps a consistent amount of carbon in the plants, ocean, land, and atmosphere. But the cycle is being disturbed. We we're kind of tinkering with the system in a way we, that's kind of questionable to say the least. Sean Sublett is a meteorologist and an expert on the carbon life cycle. He's concerned about how quickly we are pushing carbon into the atmosphere. Again, before we started, you know, burning the fossil fuels, I don't want to say everything is always in balance, but th there wasn't something pushing, pushing the carbon in one direction. I mean, th so there's obviously an excess of carbon, if you will, into the atmosphere right now. Humans started burning fossil fuels for energy en masse during the Industrial Revolution. Since, our carbon emissions have risen steadily, now at about a 50% increase since the mid-1800s. It's not just fossil fuels. Remember the plant absorbing part of the cycle? Plants take in carbon dioxide and they send back, you know, oxygen into the atmosphere. Well, that's part of it. I mean, a lot of plants are taking in carbon. When forests are cleared for human use, we remove large trees that would normally take carbon out of the atmosphere as they grow. Widespread deforestation hurts the balance. Less carbon taken in, more left in the atmosphere. But carbon takes time to impact the environment. It's kind of like, well, I'm, I'm changing, I'm turning the thermostat on the, on the oven, all right? If I turn the thermostat on the oven to 450, it's not 450 in 60 seconds. It takes a while to reach that level and then stabilize. So far, we've seen a global temperature increase between one to two degrees Fahrenheit. Scientists say we're not even halfway to where we could go. Probably gonna go up at least another two or three degrees Fahrenheit at minimum here of these next 50, 60, 70 years. Scientists believe warming up that much will impact sea levels for cities like New Orleans, Miami, Amsterdam, and more decades from now. But what we do in this decade can help prevent it. You know, there is some point of diminishing return to be sure. Uh, and that's why you see a lot of very, well, how much is it gonna warm in the next 60, 70, 80 years? Well, it depends on how much more CO2 we put into the atmosphere in these next 10, 20, 30 years or so. Keeping you climate smart, Greg Perez, Fox 43 News. While the most feared concerns lie ahead, we are already seeing some effects of warming climate here at home. And coming up on part three of our Climate Smart series, our very own Andrea Michael speaks to scientists about the impacts on the growing and allergy seasons, as well as the mosquito population. You can expect more on that tonight on Fox 43 News at 10.